Welcome back folks. Yes, it is the middle of January. Yes, we are far from a rising trout right now. Rivers are totally blown out. There's no grayling fishing at the moment. The only thing that is left to do right now is to sit at the voice and tie flies. And that's what I've been doing solid. Um, filling my own boxes and some of your orders. Uh, so thank you very much for those. The fly I'm going to tie today, it needs no introduction. It is the red tag. It's a fly that everybody should have in their fly box, full stop. It's so versatile, you can tie it as dries, as wet flies, or as like modern uh, nymphs, which I'm going to show you today on a jig hook. Um, it's a fly that, if there's a bit of colour in the water, or if you just want a, a fly that's a bit loud to attract the fish, uh, it's perfect. And on some days, you know, fish will just home in on that red tag and you will get fish after fish that other patterns just won't seem to draw. So... It's a super it's a super sort of interesting fly as well because everybody ties it slightly differently. Uh, I've tinkered with my version of it over the last few seasons. Uh, and I'm going to talk you through today why I tie mine the way I do and just show you how I tie it. So let's turn around and get straight into the tying. Just joking, there's no walk on there, it's all for movie magic. <laughs> So let's go straight in with how to tie the red tag. Now the red tag as itself, as a pattern, is really, really versatile. It's used as modern nymphs, such as I'm tying here, wet flies and dry flies. Really, really common pattern and well known for uh, its effectiveness. As always, I'm starting with a three and a half mil bead and a size 14 jig hook and Semperfly Nano Silk in 12.0. So I'm going to come straight down after tying the thread on to the tag end. I'm going to get some Globe Right number four. Although I think people use five, which is slightly more orangey. It's, it's down to personal preference, really. We're going to double that over and take the scissors, which I've just stabbed into my own thigh. And we're going to cut that and we're going to double it back over again, line those tips up. Haven't got to be perfectly level because we're going to trim it anyway. And we're going to hold them together and we're just going to tie in, ensuring that it all stays on top. I don't want it to wrap around. So I'm just going to secure that in like that. I'm not going to trim it short. I'm going to make sure I tie it all the way up to the body first. That just helps with the... Uh, the taper and the profile of the fly. So I'm going to take it right up to the head and trim it off. Get that up a bit and I'm going to come straight back down again. Again, I don't really have to, to worry about covering all the, uh, the glow bright coming through the thread. It's not really necessary, but it never hurts. For me, I've just got some copper wire in 0.1 millimetres. I prefer copper. I know some people use gold. You could even use silver, any colour you like, but I think copper gives the best effect. So we tie that in and we come back down. Now, the traditional body is peacock hurl, which is a great material and I'd have no problem using it. Um, however, I'm going to use a synthetic substitute which is this peacock green shimmer dub from fish on i just feel like you can control the uh the bulk of the body and use slightly uh less material with a synthetic stuff synthetic <laughs> synthetic stuff uh <laughs> compared to the peacock curl so i'm going to dub that on I want a fairly sparse body. I've got black thread that I'm covering so I don't have to go nuts uh, and coat all of it. If a little bit of the thread's exposed, I'm just gonna put that on, see? Catch it first and then just pull with your fingers just to tighten up that dubbing rope. And we're just gonna wrap. We're gonna go nice and slowly. See, I'm just pulling there and tightening that up. 
until we get to the head. Happy with that body, so at this point I'm going to grab the rib and wrap it the other way. And we're going to do a few locking turns. Three. I normally go for three. Three turns. And then we're just going to wiggle that off. Like so. From there, grab the tag. Now this is a point I like to make actually. There's loads of people that tie these and I see them, you know, right out here. We have to remember that this is by all, all effects, it's, it's a tag, it's not a tail. So I like to come straight off the uh, the bend of the hook there and just cut. So we've got a nice bright tag, but nothing too long. At this point, I'm gonna grab natural CDC feather, pull it to where we wanna tie it in, lock it in place. I'm gonna grab the scissors now and just cut this excess off. One more in a good cinch, just so when I turn it, it doesn't come undone. Either with your fingers or hackle pliers. Just gonna turn and wrap now. When you get to this point, lick your fingers. Just brush them back. I like sparser the better. See those fibers in there, just trap now. I'm gonna grab those and just pull those out. Making sure we've got nothing trapped, nothing causing us any issues. And I'm gonna go one, two, and three again. And cinch down. And then just come in and trim that stem away. Just gonna look at the hack on there, make sure I'm happy with it. And yeah, overall, I'm quite happy with that. It's not too heavy. It's got some nice long pronounced fibers in there. Maybe a little bit more than I'd like, but that's no problem. I'd rather tie in a little bit more to start with. I can always cut or, uh, or pull them out. Just gonna wax the thread again. Now, it may take a good amount of wax to get this stuff to dub. It's the synthetic glister dub by Vineyards, but it's really coarse fibers. So I'm gonna lick my fingers a bit. I'm just gonna grab and pinch break them all up and it goes absolutely everywhere when you do this. Like I said, it doesn't like to dub. Just take your time. Ensuring you dub it on. Half of it in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> making sure you dub it on nice and thin. You can very quickly over bulk it with this stuff. And we're just going to pull the hackle back now and we're going to go two turns, a good cinch down, see what we're, see what we're looking at. I think we'll go a third. Ah, it's fourth. It's Christmas. Well, it was Christmas once. There you go. We'll go. I don't even know what time of year it is. It's, it's January. You know what January is like. It's the lost month. Um, yeah. That's all tied in now, so that would be sort of my finished fly, as usual. I'm gonna come in with some varnish. Not totally necessary, but it's always my insurance policy. Um, especially on slippery threads like Nano Silk. I'm just gonna whip finish. And trim off. But yeah, it's a great fly. Um, works in all sizes. I'll tie these right up to like 12s. Uh, big heavy point flies. And equally, nice light nymphs. Something with a bit of colour. Perfect for that sort of water that, you know, it's carrying a bit of colour. Um, and you just want to have a fly that, you know, out of all the things coming past the fish in the water, the fish sort of looks at that red tag and goes, oh, what's that? And it's just able to, you know, notice your fly in amongst the thousands of bits and pieces floating down a river. Um, but equally, it's as good in clear water. It's just got that habit of catching fish when other flies don't. So go out there, give that a tie. 
give it a try. It works well for trout, grayling and coarse fish. Anything really. If it swims, it tags a red tag. So yeah, enjoy fishing that one guys and hope you enjoy the tutorial. <laughs>